All right, guys, welcome back to What If Frieza Was Good, where we last left off, Planet Vegeta got blew up, and Kakarot's joined Cooler's crew. How is that going to turn events? Find out now. We cut to Frieza and Vegeta. Frieza would gather Vegeta and break them the news that Planet Vegeta was blown up. Vegeta was aggravated. Who could have done this? Frieza says, we don't know. We do know there was an emergency call for one of the Saiyans. When they all got there, it blew up. It could have been a disaster, but why would they call everyone to a dangerous place? It had to have been some sort of invasion or something like that. Frieza would keep researching. and he would try to find Goku, but he couldn't do it. What happened to Kakarot? How come he couldn't find him? However, eventually he would find footage of Cooler blowing up the planet. And Frieza put it together. Kakarot must have betrayed them and called all the Saiyans to go there just for him to blow it up. Vegeta was shocked. How could someone do this? How could someone betray their Saiyan race? Betray their Saiyan pride? Frieza didn't know, but he told him they all had to train and that he must train too. But Frieza wasn't going to train train. He was just going to do some light exercises here and there, which greatly boosted his strength. Meanwhile, we cut to Cooler who doesn't have nearly the potential, so he's training much harder. As he's training, he would train with Goku and King Piccolo. F Cooler was impressed by Goku's stunt, and he liked his loyalty. Cooler decided to train him, and he knew about Saiyan Zenkai's boost, so he would break all of his bones and throw him into a healing chamber and have him heal again and again and again. Cooler put Kakarot under intense training, he beat him, abused him, destroyed him, and rebuilt him. This was the way Cooler trained Kakarot. He also taught him some moves, like the Death Beam and the Kamehameha. Cooler trained Kakarot personally. He also trained King Piccolo. They all three of them began to train and get stronger and stronger and stronger. And since King Piccolo was eternally young, he did have some quite a bit of potential. May not as much as Kakarot, but they were still there. However, Cooler knew something. Even though he had to get stronger, the sooner he stroke Frieza, the better. Cooler had an ace up his sleeve, and he thought he was finally ready to kill his brother. But how is he going to do this? He doesn't want to get lured into a trap, and he knew Frieza wouldn't get lured into one of his traps. He might just have to fight him, plain as day. But then, he had an idea. Maybe there was a way to lure him. He was a goody two-shoes. He heard about the Frieza Force protecting Namek. If he went there and invaded for the Dragon Ball, slaughtering Namekians, he could draw him out. And he can get a free wish. A win-win. He knew it was time to go to Namek. Cooler would head straight to Namek. He didn't know if these Dragon Ball rumors are true, but he did hear a peace deal about Frieza and the Namekians. So, if he did destroy them, he could gather him out. The spaceship would land. Cooler... King Piccolo and Goku would all get out. Cooler would say, you two go to the Namekians, cause some havoc, and ask about the Dragon Balls. I'll get ready to fight Frieza. And Cooler would do some last minute training. As Goku and King Piccolo went to a Namekian village, the Namekians were shocked to see King Piccolo, a Namekian with pure evil. They've never seen anything like it. They were known for being a peaceful race. Piccolo was shocked too. His entire life he thought he was a demon, but seeing his people, it reminded him of something. But then he had an idea. As then he said, stay here, Kakarot. As then he grabbed Namekian and began to torture him and say, fuse with me. He said, no, I'll never fuse with you. And then he blasted him off. Blasting certain parts of him and torturing him again and again until he decided to let him fuse. And as he fused, a bit of his personality changed. So he'll have to be careful with that. However, he did get a lot stronger. If he can torture weak Namekians and convince them to fuse with them, King Piccolo's power will rise greatly. Kakarot would then torture village and get a Dragon Ball. This is amazing. We can make a wish. King Piccolo then had an idea. He could wish to be the strongest in the universe. And he could kill Cooler and Goku and stop working for him. Everything seemed like it was going perfectly. However, the Namekians, the Grand Elder Guru, would call Frieza with a device Frieza gave him. Guru would call Frieza. As Frieza got the call, he would tell him what was going on. 
Frieza said, I'm sorry, that's my brother. I'm so sorry my family caused you this pain. Guru would say, I could since you have a good heart. Come here, Frieza. I will unlock your potential. And you can defeat your evil brother. Frieza would agree as he flew off straight to Namek. Frieza and his men were waiting. Zarbon, Dodoria, and even the Ginyu force were called to go to Namek. Zarbon would say, we're ready, Lord Frieza. No, you're too weak to handle my brother. And... He has men working for him. There's no telling how strong Kakarot is now. We need Vegeta to take care of him. Vegeta will look up and say, Don't worry, I'll get my revenge. And he's saying that spits in our heritage and blows up the planet. We'll be destroyed. Vegeta was his right-hand man with Zarbon Dodoria since he's gotten so strong. And Vegeta's squad wasn't too far behind him. But would it be enough to stop Goku? They just didn't know. The spaceship landed as they all got out. But as they got out, Cooler collected most of the Dragon Balls. As he had five, he was ready to get them all. As soon as he landed, however, Guru could sense it and, and told Nail to go towards them and give them a Dragon Ball and unlock their potential. Nail would say, I need to protect you, sir. He would say, go now. This is an order. This is important. Nail would agree, and he would quickly fly over to Frieza. Nail would act fast, knowing they didn't have a lot of time. So, as he got Frieza, they would quickly go to Guru's place. As they went, Frieza went in to get his potential unlocked. But as it unlocked, Cooler, Kakarot, and King Piccolo all showed up. Zarbon, Doria, and Vegeta with Vegeta's squad was also there. Raditz would say, How could you do this, brother? Betray your family. Betray. But before he can finish talking, he flew at Raditz. Frieza flew to try to save him, but then Cooler went in and punched him. As suddenly, Kakarot went over to Raditz's face and said, Family means nothing. All that matters is power. As he blew him up, but then Vegeta would kick him to the floor. Damn it, I was too late. Vegeta and Kakarot would battle. As King Piccolo would batter Zarbon and Doria and Nappa, and Cooler and Frieza would both begin to fight. As Frieza fought Cooler, he went straight into his final form and began to beat him up. Cooler and Frieza fought, and Frieza, with his potential unlocked, was easily stronger than him. It seemed like he was going to win. Frieza would say, I'm sorry. It came to this. I really am. I wish things could have gone better. Cooler would say, shut up. Do you think you've won? I'll admit, I can't beat you in this form, but unlike you, instead of making stupid forms that make me weaker so I can better maintain my power, I made a form that makes me stronger. As suddenly, Cooler would transform. Frieza would be shocked as he would walk back. He knew he had to win, though, and with the potential unlock, Frieza had a chance, but it wasn't going to be easy. Frieza and Cooler both locked into an epic battle. As that was going on, King Piccolo stretched out his arms, grabbing Zarbon to Doria, pulling him closer, and blowing them both up. <laughs> Torturing some Namekians and fusing with them makes you a lot stronger. Nappa would look at him and say, You may be stronger, green man, but you're still a bug compared to a Saiyan, as he would punch him. And as King Piccolo and Nappa fought, Vegeta would fight Goku. This isn't like you, Kakarot. What the hell is wrong with you? Kakarot would say, Shut up. You always look down upon me. You always boss me around. But now, I'm going to control the universe with Cooler. Until he looked around, making sure he couldn't hear him. I get bored of him. Then I'll get rid of him. I will rule this universe. Not you. Not Frieza. Not Cooler. Me. <laughs> Vegeta laugh. You're nothing but Cooler's lapdog. Can't you see that? Like you're one to talk. You barked for Frieza. Vegeta got mad as he punched Kakarot. Then Kakarot punched him. As all three of them were engaged in battle, Nail couldn't stand this any longer. Nail was about to get involved, but then King Piccolo punched him down to the floor. If he could fuse with him, he could become stronger than Kakarot and maybe stand a chance against Cooler. King Piccolo knew what he needed to do, but then Nappa would punch him. He couldn't torture him to fuse with him and keep up with Nappa at the same time. Things were becoming difficult as he began to battle both of them at the same time. Meanwhile, Cooler was battling Frieza up into space. Cooler would say, this is the end for you, brother. 
you trained hard. Well, I, I would say that if you weren't lazy, but then Frieza went into his buff form. This is the only way he can equal Cooler in battle, but even with it, he knew there were major drawbacks, and he had to finish him off right here, right now. King Piccolo would then rip off both of his hands and kick him away. This shocked Nappa and Vegeta, but suddenly the hands would fly up and blow off Nappa and Vegeta's tails. As in, Kakarot would throw up a little fake moon and become a great ape. <laughs> he began to laugh, say, I got the two Saiyans. As then he kicked Nappa and Vegeta away and began to torture them, brutalize them. Meanwhile, King Piccolo began to torture Nail. Nail was a strong, powerful warrior, but with Ping Piccolo's fusions and him training with Cooler, he was no match for him. However, as he was doing this, Nail would say, I'll never fuse with you. If you don't, I'll give you the slowest death imaginable. Fine. You can't force it. And guess what? Even if we did fuse, you'll still lose the Frieza. There's no way he'll lose to his brother. King Piccolo says, shut up, even if he does, I'll be the one to defeat him. But suddenly, Namekians blasted King Piccolo's back. There were a few warriors who survived, and they showed up to battle King Piccolo. However, this would be a downside. Some of them had weak wills, and he was able to torture them and force them to fuse. You see, you can't force someone to become one with you forever. You have to torture them until they agree, or do it naturally like you're supposed to. Meanwhile... Kakarot held Nappa and Vegeta, squishing them in his hands. As they began to scream out in anger, scream out in pain, he began to laugh. I'm not going to lie, Vegeta. You might have won. Our powers were similar. As much as my pride hates to admit it, you were probably a bit stronger than me. However, in this grade 8 form, you are no match. Vegeta would then yell, Damn it! <sighs> <sighs> As suddenly we cut back to Frieza. As Frieza and Cooler were battling, Frieza would begin to charge everything he had into one attack. King Cooler would laugh. You gave up stamina and speed in that form. There's no way you could hit me with that attack. I'll admit it might kill me, but there's no way you can. But then Frieza had an idea. It was a technique he learned from Yardrat. Since he had a bunch of planets under him, he was learning from all of them. He put his hand on his head and transcend transmission away. Cooler was shocked. Where did he go? But then he teleported right behind him and hit him with the key blast, launching Cooler straight into the sun, killing him, or at least he thought. And Frieza would then go down dynamic. His stamina was running low, so he began to charge it all into one blast. As King Piccolo and Kakarot would both charge into one blast, and they would hit each other. The beam struggle was epic, and Frieza almost died, but then he thought about his family. He thought about Vegeta. He thought about his empire. He thought about the people under him. They were like family to him. And he was not going to let him die. As he put all that power, all that energy into his blast. It went straight up, hitting Kakarot and King Piccolo, defeating them. Even though he had almost no power left. Then he powered down and fell to the floor, passing out. Kakarot would be able to crawl his way, almost dead, into a space pod. King Piccolo would be able to regenerate and barely walk away. As they both left, it seemed like the battle was over. And that's where I'll leave things off. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you liked that video. Let me know what you think in the comments below.